ball with an attitude. Football like you've never seen it before. Hey, yo, get ready for the revolution. It will be televised. A new day has come, baby. It comes to no surprise. The strong will stand, the weak will fall. To their knees on the floor as we watch you fall. Yes! And now, the XFL hits New York. The New York Hitmen, a team hungry for a win. This is their battleground, their backyard, and their head coach, Rusty Tillman. Coach, welcome to New York. Get out of the way! Gotta be here! It's an unforgiving city with very honest fans. If the Thunderbolts have their way like the Outlaws did last week, Rusty's gonna be hard up for friends. XFL and the Big Apple, there's nothing quite like a New York fan. In these parts, you have to earn it. The rewards are always greater on Broadway, but so are the expectations. And today, here at Giant Stadium, the Hitmen know they need to make a huge first impression at home after a sluggish opener in Vegas. It's the Birmingham Bolts and the Hitmen next on TNN. And now, for the first time ever at the Meadowlands, your New York, New Jersey Hitman. a warm New York welcome to the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the XFL, Vince McMahon. Giant Stadium for coming out and braving the elements, XFL style. As you know, here in the XFL, we have our version of the coin toss. It's called a scramble. And in a moment, two men representing each team will scramble for the ball. The man who gains complete control of that ball will have his team and the option of his team to determine whether or not they want to kick off or receive at the very beginning of the game as well as in overtime, should there be any. Best of luck to both teams. Let's play some football. New York, I'd like to introduce Mr. Chris Brantley, Tony McCall. Birmingham Bolt, gentlemen, I'm going to say ready on my whistle. You start, don't false start. Say ready to I, blow the whistle. I will say ready, I'll blow the whistle. You'll start from the 30, no bumping. Whoever gets the ball will have the choice of deferring, kicking, receiving, or defending a goal. Now wait for my whistle. Get lined up, get ready. You ready? Say ready. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Huh? I want to say ready, then we'll wish. Ready? Come 
So Chris Brantley of the Hitman has gained the ball, and New York will have the option to kick off or receive to start off. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the XFL and TNN. Craig Benavini with Big Bob Golick, and we are excited for this one. Certainly, the Hitmen know, hey, they stunk in week number one, but they also know, Bob, they were undefeated in preseason, and they right. expect to regain that form in front of the home crowd here today. Yeah, way to, way to beat around the bush, huh? <laughs> you know, first impressions were so important last week when the league started. Great job, but I'll tell you what, we saw some great football last night. The Hitmen, they got to come here and make the good first impressions with these New York, New Jersey fans. We all know what they're like. We all know how tough they can be. I'll tell you what, they got to get on it early or that Birmingham team will take it to them. Oh. Rusty Tillman is the head coach of the New York Hitmen, a longtime NFL assistant, 16 years with Seattle. Said he cried last week after the game because he cares so much for his club and he felt bad for them. They laid an egg. He expects a much better effort today. 48-year-old Brooklyn native Jerry Donato is the head coach of Birmingham, well-known in the college circles, most right recently right with LSU. Hey, he may feel more comfortable here than, uh, <laughs> than Rusty does. Got a brother in and some goombas from back home in <laughs> Brooklyn for the game. Leo Aragus will kick off New York, deciding to kick the ball off. Again, if it goes to overtime like last night in the big game in L.A., yep. they would have the option also in overtime of receiving or kicking. And, of course, they will uh, get the ball to start the second half as well. Well, we're definitely talking about some good football weather. This kind of weather only crazy football fans like and some players that are running around. A little brisk, a little chilly. We'll be okay, though. Capacity crowd of New York fans. Set for this one. Leo Aragus. Gordine takes it at the 20 for Birmingham. And he's crunched down at the 27-yard line. Michael Blair made the hit after the 10-yard return. Casey Weldon is at the helm for Birmingham. He had a big week last week, Bob. Threw for a week one high of 312 yards, a couple of touchdowns, but also an interception. And the offense was a little bit sluggish in the early going for Birmingham and without a doubt watch this Birmingham team they they revolve around the passing attack 71% of their attack is passing led by Casey so they're gonna have to bounce it up if they're gonna be a good team cold windy day at Giant Stadium and they're passing first down off the Cape of McGuire and he gets up near the first down Eleven yard gain is a first down for Birmingham. Trey left. Trey left. Thirty-five or twenty-five on one. With the cold, I tell you, he comes. the cold conditions you expect the teams to run the ball a little more today. You, you think they're trying to keep it on the ground? Not only the cold, but the breeze too. There's a little breeze blowing out there, which can affect them. Thirty-five. Hit. James Bostic is in the backfield for maybe a couple. And the Hitman D is pumped up. You know, Bob, last week, uh -huh. the Hitman were, as Christian Mamalonga told me, the defensive lineman, he felt this team was caught in the lights of the hype of the first game. The defense is a good way to start a game where you can use that hype to your advantage. Hey, you know, we, we've seen it all over the place. Defense can set the tempo in a game. They've given up that first first down, but if they can uh, keep this this team off this Birmingham Bolt offense off the field, they got a shot at it. All right, good job, good job. And especially, Craig, early in the season, defense is much easier than offense. Timeout number one. De defense is instinctual. It's de defense you go after, you make the hits. There you got Rusty, who loves running that defense, getting his guys together. They went ace, okay? That's all right. They're still ace right now, Tony. What do we got, second and eight? Still and eight. All right. Let's go uh, second and eight. Let's go. Uh, they like to run outside here to counter. Two runs outside. Let's go under zone. Here we go. Rusty Tillman saying they went ace. Not right, sure exactly what he was now, referring Tony, to. The I got to get that personnel. Now tell them to be alert up there. 
A tough right situation. Down ace, Deech, they, you know who comes in, who comes out. A lot of these guys they have personnel. You hear terms like ace. A lot of those are personnel packages, depending on how many linemen, how many 34, linebackers. 34, 35, all right? Let's go. Let's go rip. 34, 35, one. Casey turned 32 a week ago. Terrific hey. college career. Heisman runner up at Florida State. Bostic. Oh, he's crunched in the backfield. Man. Haven Fields ended up making the tackle. The guy they called Baby Boy. Hey, you know what? Thinking about this, remember, the Hitmen won the scramble. They got to choose whether they received or kick the ball. Left, they chose left. probably because the inefficiencies they've had on offense to set the tempo with their defense. And so they chose to defend. Third and eight. Requires the man in motion. Looking oh. his way. Picked off. Demon Wheeler's got it for the hitman. And yes, the D sets the tempo. Man, it starts up front. Hey, we can talk about the interception all you want, but it absolutely starts up front. Nice, beautiful timing on that step in front of the receiver. I'll tell you what, if you heard the shot that Casey Weldon took as he let that ball go, you know what caused that interception. Casey may be rethinking about the XFL. He got green <laughs> last week despite putting up the big numbers. So Charlie Polari, who's got a lot to prove himself, handing off to Elias. Let's go down to Kip Lewis. Hey, Damon, great way to start out for your defense here. What's up? It ain't over. Gang fans, we need y'all today, baby. We need y'all today, huh? I was telling you about that Casey Weldon hit. Take a listen to this. So you want to play quarterback, do you? Dwayne Sab, the right end. A local guy out of Jersey City made the big hit. He was out for three years not playing football until the XFL. There's Elias again. Finding some room and some tough yards on the right. Gain of four. Patrick Scott out of South Carolina State made the stop. What about Polari? You know, here's Check a guy who looked great in the preseason. Get out of the Bronx. Check color. Oh, with a quick offense. <laughs> There's Elias again up the gut. Gain of three. Got across the 20-yard line a little bit to see if he no, got no, that no. first. To the flat. Nobody went to the flat. Yes, they did. That's who they threw to. I cover two. I okay, so you got to carry number three to the flat. I went up and pressed. Okay. You got to carry three to the flat. That's why I told you. Stand up. Yes. Rusty Tillman handles most of the defensive calls. On the sidelines, not as involved with the hold offense. Up, hold up, hold up. This will be close Third to the first, first down. Right, I'm going right, to check Roger. it. Third or first. It's close. Couple inches. Right there is good. Hey, Keith Elias is a great story. Tough, hard nosed running back. Classic overachiever. Spent five years in the NFL, but. He became a guy who made too much money in the NFL in his role. 600 grand. Could be on Wall Street. Monday, Monday, set. With screen plays the Red last 80. few years. Red 80. <laughs> Elias for the first down. That's a nice trip. Oh. Man, they were loaded for bear inside for him. And nice move at bouncing it outside. He's not the biggest guy in the world, and he's a local four, product. Four, 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 four. Trey left close, 37 slant, on one already. Got to look at big 88, we'll see him in the game as you look at Elias. The tight end is 6'7 on the headman, Ryan Collins. 
Elias bouncing left this time inside the 15. Calvin Jackson tripped him up with the 12. Hey! Well, if there's any, hold on, hold on, any hold on. question about how this offense was going to respond this week coming back home, right off the bat, they're making that good first impression. Good job of biding his time. Not really bursting, but really reading the defenders very well. Opportunity knocking for 2-2 because the starter, Dino Filio, was injured mm -hmm. in last week's game and is not with the team for a few weeks. Here's Elias taking advantage of it across the top. Gain of three. Well, the guy who made that stop, Bob, is James Willis. Now here's a guy who's been around with 12 tackles last week. Got the big heart and an insurance business in Huntsville no, just no, no, in no, case. No. After a big, big, big. long NFL career, but he's the heart and soul. Right, without a of doubt. The purple and yellow. You, you, you listen to him, you watch him play. <laughs> Elias again. Oh, look at the first. Down to the two, first down. You know, it's amazing. You watch this You watch this game and you realize what it's all about. These guys playing here in the XFL, they are absolutely, you, you can see the commitment. Everybody wants to talk about quarterbacks and running backs, but the thing that you watch and the thing that shows the motivation is that the, 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 the intensity that these guys had down in the pit, the intensity the guy shows after he gets hit the first time. They've been stuck with a goose heading for a week. The only team that has not scored in the league as Mike Archie tries to get to the goal line, make he picked up a yard, so they are just burning with desire to try and get in the end zone after being the only team shut out in the XFL. Hey, we've had some time to talk to Rusty, too. Rusty's not the kind of guy that took that lightly. Rusty Tillman, man. Like right after the game. Collins in motion. Here's Archie. He may have been Touchdown. Well, 28 year old Mike Archie gets the touchdown. Now, the hitman will go for the extra point. And in the league, it is certainly anything. But a guarantee, in fact, it's around 41% so far for just one point. That's right. Remember, we are not kicking the ball. Boring, man. Anybody can kick a football. They got to earn it. Get down there. You get your one point, line it up, and take it to the end zone. It is far from Monday, automatic. Black 38. Black 38. Hunt. Archie's going to try to do it again. Close, but he's knocked down just before he got in. So, well, they'll take six. But they'll have to settle for that. Another stop on the extra point attempt. Well, Rusty has got to be loving what this team has done. What they have, they stepped it up. Making the first score here in New York. Most of my friends who I graduated with, they're all right now building behind me in the New York Stock Exchange. But seven years down the road, I'm still playing professional football. Football's about exhilaration. You know, basically, football is life at an accelerated pace. You know, there's no other time I've ever felt as alive as when I'm on the football field. You take a big hit, you make a big run, you do something to get your heart going, that's what football's all about. You wouldn't know he's a football player if you walked by him on the street. 5'10", about 200 pounds, the star of that drive. Workhorse, all heart, 25 yards. He knows he could be making the big bucks on Wall Street, too. You say you wouldn't know him. I'll tell you what, he's got something in his eye. There's something in his <laughs> eyes that tell me that guy wants to hit somebody. And his nose, too. I think it's been in a couple of times. Or dying, bringing it back across the 25. I'll tell you what, man, I love hearing this hitting. Look, everybody's pads are frozen. These guys are going to be beating the tar out of each other. Great crunchy going on in the hits. 
from the Hitmen, as expected. Now for the Bolts, though, hey, here's a team that would trail 19 zip last week, got off to the horrible start, and today not what they had in mind either. Well, did a nice job at bringing that team back, at least to be competitive last week. Well, then the Jackson, Quincy Jackson for a gain of seven. You know, they talk, talking to Jerry Donato, the head coach, before the game about running with the weather. Mm -hmm. They may get to a situation if they get behind here, they're going to have to throw the ball. They've got a good passer. Well, it doesn't, doesn't look like they came in expecting to run the ball at all. They, once again, seem like they're sticking to their normal game plan, which is set it back, give it to Weldon, and hopefully he can complete enough passes before somebody knocks him out of the game the way he's taking these, hit, these hits. Blue 25, and hit. Bostic will get a chance. Crunched at the line by mm. Israel no, no, Raybon. No, no, hell no, hell no. Hey. Why does he have Raybo in the back of that jersey? Here's where Raybon, defensive tackle, and just like Rambo, I go in the war in the trenches. And that's why they call me Raybo. Talking to Israel, his dad heard about the XFL, says, You're not giving up football yet. And he has the freedom of expression here on the field to come back, put that name on the back of the jersey, but he said his dad was really the one his boss that gets a couple and pushed him and he was open to, his dad didn't see the xfl commercials yeah. he said are you gonna give it up are you gonna give it up and raybon was uh, is back and he's happy to be doing it hey how about us you see right there baby boy how about us man when do we get our names we put our names in the back of our jackets <laughs> you have a wide enough piece of tape for, <laughs> for you mr go thanks man first down for birmingham Weldon and Jackson makes the catch across the 40. And remember the rules here are different than uh, you've seen before. One of the rules being the fact that you can have forward motion. One player can be moving towards the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped. And uh, you're going to see that quite a bit. Guys going in lateral motion and then in forward motion, getting a little, little jump in the ball. How does that affect bump and run with a guy coming with speed at the line of scrimmage? I'll tell you what, if you don't get the guy, you don't hit him when he's taken off in the line of scrimmage, he has got a flat out good lead on you. You're not going to catch up as a cornerback. You better hope you got some safety. Boston some safety up. Nice. Shit. Ooh. Boston crunched on the play. Columbia settles. Man, what a hit. Talk about a safety coming up and making a hit. Let's go, Nickel. That's Rusty's got a play. Uh, 22. Mm -hmm. and he's he's got a little more there, confidence and a little smirk back right. in his face after last week's disaster in Vegas. We're in good shape. Ron Merkerson also right. hoping on that stop. The Merk. McGuire in motion. No. Off the hands and incomplete. Good coverage by Mike Barber. So here we nice go job, with the punt for hey, Palazzo. And of course, in the hey, XFL, it could be an offensive maneuver as well because mm -hmm. the ball hey, is absolutely free once it gets to the 35 in this play, 25 yards. Kirby Dardar was back. He was telling me yesterday he's worried about the wind in this stadium. And, and you all know by now there are no fair catches in the XFL. He's got a five-yard danger zone around. The ball is blocked. The ball is blocked. It's now off the hands. It's a free ball. But it looks like the hitmen have recovered the ball. And that's an interesting one. If the ball hits the hand mm -hmm. of the blocker, well, then they've already touched the ball. Hitman looks to add another. They lead 6 zip. We couldn't see the game as well. And couldn't smell the the, 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 the the hot dogs and the kibasi cooked right. behind us. Just couldn't enjoy it the same way. Well, why does it always come down to food, you know? Well, it just smells good around here. By the way, Bob did have to put the hot warmers in his pocket <laughs> just in case. I don't think he's that tough, folks. Oh. Well, Larry's pass. Oh. It out. Nearly picked oh. off, was it? It looks it is. It's picked oh. off. Johnny Mitchell was the man about it, and yes, I think he has it. Big play for the Bolts. 
but a 6'4", 312 pound. You want to talk about a guy who eats some food. Hey, here's, here's, a, guy, here's a guy also glad he didn't have to run with the ball afterwards. I Watch it get stopped the line of scrimmage, but get those hands up, baby. Good awareness. Wow, Johnny hey. Mitchell was the lowest draft pick on this club. You know, when they when they, they made it here. That's right, he's doing a heck of a job. You know, they tell you, they said, if you don't get a pass rush, at least get your hands up, and he did a good job of keeping an eye on the ball. Hands like that, maybe they'll go on the other side of the ball as the tight end. Pass by Weldon. Incomplete. Wheeler on the cover. Hey, it was Wheeler who made the big interception mm -hmm. to key the Hitman drive, and yeah. the Bolts are hoping for the same thing there way this time after the Mitchell play. Well, I'll tell you what. In, in, you're look, taking a look at Casey Walden right now. He is one of the toughest quarterbacks I have ever seen play football. He took so many hits last week, big hits that would have put normal people down. But it, I'll tell you, last week, XFL game, that guy said, no, nope, I'm all right. I'm going back in. Took heat from in the home crowd, too. McGuire out, that might be a lateral. Ball. On the sidelines with us is Lee Rearman. Johnny Mitchell, 400-pound guys are supposed to have hands like that, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I had three in the in college, so it's just, I just they have a kind of knack for it right now. Oh, they love him out there. Those New York, New Jersey fans love him. The question <laughs> is, back in Birmingham, how much do the fans love Casey Weldon? The backup, of course, is the great Alabama grad, Jay Barker. It was loved down there because he won a national championship. Last week they were screaming for Casey's head. Yeah. They wanted Jay in there. And I'm not, I'm Casey not, ended not. up coming on the second half. The coach is going to be screaming for Casey's head right now. Play game. Too much time. Offense number 11. Five yards. Down remains three. Charlie, what happened on that interception? Uh, the defensive end made a nice play. I threw the ball. He jumped up and tipped it. He made a nice play. He intercepted it. There's nothing we could do about it. If you didn't know where Charlie was from, you, you, you know now, don't you? Yes, he's, he's out of the, the, the Bronx. What better quarterback representative than New York, New Jersey hitman? Been in some movies, too. Third and 26. Well, the got a receiver out there. Oh! Good defensive play by Ty Talton. Williams was trying to bring it in. He almost did the Willie Mays job here. Outside of the Bronx. Tell you what, Ty Talton, the one thing with that pass, though he had a lot of time to throw it, a lot of time to find the receiver. He left it up in the air a little bit too long, giving Talton the chance to get over. I'm telling you what, safeties just don't like getting up and making hits in the line. They like getting over and making plays on balls that are floating. All right, so after 25, this ball will be live on the punt. Great block! Great block! The Hitmen have it! The Cosmo comes up with it after the Mike Barber block. Anthony the Cosmo, one of the great stories in the XFL. And we'll have more on him as we go along. But he comes up with it, another big turnover. And the Hitmen are in business. Mike Barber, 65, making some good plays already today. Look at him coming from the outside, getting ahead of the ball. The Cosmo, great job. <laughs> hey, hold on to the ball there, man. He tried to ladder with the last second. I want to mess around with that too much. The Cosmo's mother has adopted and fostered over 80 children in her lifetime. At the age of 58, she fought the state of New Jersey to take in Anthony De Cosmo, who grew up with the De Cosmo family, went to Catholic school marvelous where she had a battle the state to get anthony we'll have more of that story coming up Back up. got a flag in the field bob she's 81 years old and she's not yelling at vince mcmahon for being here in the environment i wasn't really yelling i was just you know concerned <laughs> how do you know we don't have her mic she might be complaining personal foul 58 defense Penalties half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Charles Polari getting bailed out so far by uh, some big plays. They're saying Charles Preston. And there she is. Katrina DeCosmo. She's got a little Cos sign up. And there he is, Anthony DeCosmo, who's 23 years of age, still lives here in New Jersey. Three-year letterman with Boston College. 
He's coaching at the high school last fall. There's Elias. Oh. Wrapped him up with a five. Big gain. He lost oh. the ball. Was wrapped out by Wayne Butler. Was he down, though? That's it. No. No. Uh -uh. Dwayne Butler just took that ball away. Hey, all, all the props in the world to Elias for fighting for the extra yardage. But man, you got to hold on to the ball. They're fighting for every play. Check it. He's fighting for the extra yards. You'll see it right there. Big hit. Great play. Dwayne Butler, good job. Good awareness of getting that ball out. So another turnover, and the Bolts will take over deep in their own defense. Zone. These guys are playing possessed. They're playing at home. And they're feeling some excitement. A little difference from last oh, week where they were shut out right. and did not play with the same spirit. Yeah. They were caught up in the hype last week. This week they seem like they settled down and playing the kind of ball they thought they would in the preseason. The ball, the ball is free. Look at him. He's free. Free ball. But it goes out of bounds. We talked about Anthony DeCosmo and the great story with his mother. Let's take a closer look. They called me the day before. They said, we have a baby for you. Are you ready? I said, the bassinet's all clean and ready. There's no question about me being adopted. You know what I mean? It's always been like that from day one. Well, I have a cute little boy for you. Look at him. I said, oh, isn't he beautiful? Look at his eyes. And, you know, he was blinking, you know, like, oh, I'm happy to be here. That's the way I saw it. Yeah, mother sees it. My mother always, even when I was a child, when I was young, and I had questions about it, she always made it like a blessing. Where I used to be like, I'm adopted. What is it, that no one wanted me? Why was I adopted? And she said, no. It wasn't that nobody didn't want you. It's that we got to pick you. I remember always having to have manners, um, coming home, making sure your homework was done before I went out to play or do anything else. And just, uh... I remember a lot of love. I, well, I was devastated. I thought I'd have my husband all my life. And when I lost him, I, if I didn't have Anthony, I think I would have given up. I didn't miss any games of Paramus Catholic. I sat there in November freezing. I was blue, but I wouldn't leave. I don't remember not being at a game. I suffered a little stroke two years ago. When they said to me that I couldn't go, I said, I went to Florida, I went to Syracuse, I went all over, and this is in my backyard and I'm not going? That's what you think. Without her taking me in and giving me the opportunity to achieve what I have achieved, then who knows where I would be right now. Because I'm just one of the blessed ones. I have prayers for everybody in the family. But I put them aside, and they're all for Anthony. There she is. I'll tell you what. Hats off to that that woman for what she's done for all those kids over the years, and more importantly, what she's doing here out in the cold, checking out her son. She's a hero, Bob. Polari. Throws right to DeCosmo on cue. And Anthony makes the catch for mom and the family. <laughs> I wonder if they changed the game plan. Of course, they could see it because in the stadium here, the experience is not just what your eyes see on the field, but around the field. And, of course, the big Tron board. They saw the whole feature here, the players as well on the field. And I noticed the both players look up and they're showing the baby pictures going, yeah, he is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Valeri, oh, got him man. again, the Cosmo, getting loose. Hey, Craig, like I said before, Craig, you know, you talk about skill position guys all you want. Oh, don't want mom to hear that hit. You can talk about the skill position guys all you want. Polari has all the time in the world. His line is just keeping people. Alliance for a couple. 
And the bone crunching hits continue. Well, we got a chance. We've had a chance to talk to Elias, and he's not the kind of guy that's taking that uh, that, that lightly when he had that ball taken okay. away from him. He has had something to prove. Check. Counter First swap. quarter running one down. One. The play clock has a few more seconds on it, so if they want to snap it, they can. We're going to have to do it in five seconds. Round 59. Round 59. And they didn't get it off. So the Hitmen, though, are warming up. Wild first quarter here for the Hitmen debut in New York. There's no doubt this is a different Hitman team that we saw last week. They're playing from their hearts out in front of the New York crowd. We're done with one. If I had an extra 2500 I would pay my 1998 taxes. I'll go back to Jamaica. Well, with my $2,500, I'm going to give something to the guys on our practice squad, and the rest of it, i probably put it in the bank. I hope the IRS is not watching here today. Yeah, well, they probably know already. <laughs> you know those guys. Sandwiches, diapers, IRS, everything. Everybody's got their motivation for the extra $2,500. Larry, eluding traffic, throwing it. He was outside the pocket. Hey, although the Bolts are arguing the about that. Hey, you want to know something? Finally, a quarterback trying to defend himself. You know, if you're going to start getting beat on a regular basis, you got to learn how to defend yourself. Polari on that one got a nice, nice straight arm. Uh, all right, maybe he better hit the weights a little bit more, but uh, a valiant attempt is saving his own hide. Hey, one thing about going up in New York, you know how to defend yourself. <laughs> That's right. Third and nine. You're going to hand off. Elias. Oh. And fighting and getting down to about the two. It's very close to the first down. You got to tell me to play. What's up? Keep on running the ball, what? You got to tell me, man. I'll tell you what, for not for saying he didn't know the play, certainly looked pretty good. Man, this is the kind of commitment. This is what you're seeing. You know, these guys love playing the game, but they all, you know, they didn't get paid during training camp. This is their opportunity to not only get their salaries, but they get the extra $2,500 for the win. These guys are motivated to come out there. So the hitmen are going to take a time out here, and certainly the motivation goes throughout the club. After that loss last week, and these guys knew coming out in front of the home crowd, they had to put on a show today. Home opener. You tell we're making this touch stop. Oh, done. I had about 50 phone calls on Monday. <clears throat> Obviously, I didn't know what all the game was going on. Telling me that Jesse Ventura and Tony Saragusa said I didn't get the team fired up at half and all that kind of stuff. But I, you know, it's a bunch of crap. It's not true. Uh, whatever people saw uh, was real. Okay, I don't, if they want an actor, they can hire Al Pacino. I'm going to do what I think is best for the team. Because I really don't care what Jesse Ventura or Tony Saragusa or Vince McMahon or anybody says. I can really care less. I'm doing this job the best I can, and I'll coach it the way I think is best. Me too. I don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> okay, baby. And this guy sounds like he's from he, New York. Very outspoken yeah. guy, a lot of passion. But you know, you outspoken, it him. outspoken is one thing. Honest is the other. This guy is absolutely honest. He is just going to tell you exactly what's on his mind. If he ever moves to Minnesota, I can tell you who he's not voting for. <laughs> Jesse didn't like the way he coached the game last week, especially at halftime with the emotion. Fourth and one. Elias trying to pick a spot. He was crunched down. And he was the Bolts feel they stopped him. He was hoping that something, he slowed it down. He was hoping something would open up on the backside. Bolt defense played it well, staying at home, and man, he just had nowhere to go. Big stop for the Bolts, especially with the troubles they're having in offense to not give up a touchdown there. What's he got, you know? So the Bolts will take over. It's still 6 nothing. Hitman. Let's listen to Keith Elias, who was stopped in that fourth and one moments ago. Hey, guys, come here. Listen up. Hey, this is, this is the biggest play of the game. Right here. We put the... We put the... 
biggest play of the game, but the Bolts stopped him turning the tide as Foster gets a couple of yards. That was a huge play for Birmingham. You're down 12, 13, yeah. nothing. They had a tough start last week. That's a real hole they don't want to get into in front of, of all people, a New York crowd. You know, and, and so far, the Bolts have not put together any, any significant drives. Tough situations start from your own three-yard line. But we do remember last week, the second half of that game against Memphis, they found a way to do it. Casey Weldon right there, he was the one that, is, that orchestrated the entire comeback. But too much of a hole to dig at him completely because they still lost by uh, two points. With a late touchdown, fell 22-20. Oh, oh he's there's... sacked for the safety. Unless he lost the ball, let's see what the referee says. I didn't see the safety signal. I think that's going to be a, a touchdown. Well, the hitmen are certainly doing their part at selling the idea. Forward progress is ruled on the field of play. Third down. Oh, oh man. In a league with well, check no out his in feet. the grass pool. Yeah, well, see where his feet are when he, when he takes the hit. He's standing still on the field of play, feet in bounds. They're saying his forward motion. Oh, man, I, I don't know, Bob. Man. He was hit, and the ball was jarred free. And, and he was not giving himself up. There's no in the grass. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bad call. Close to the goal line doesn't matter. He's saying no call timeout. The ball's so close to the goal line doesn't matter. Well, they don't get the points out of it. Six or two, safety or touchdown. Look at that look. Yeah, what, what, what they're talking about is the forward motion right oh. there. What forward motion? Well, they're saying that Weldon's hand, feet were on the line of scrimmage, or, or excuse me, were on the uh, in the field of play. And when he got hit and got knocked backward, it'd be like a, a receiver if catching the ball, the ball hand, like an 18. If he's standing on the line. Go yeah, tell him. Oh, well, just tell him that. Tell him that. It looked to me like he was trying to pass the ball. Yeah. Didn't no? the ball come out right. of his hand? Yeah. So, well, no, I, we, they didn't call the safety because the guy was... See, the ball come out of his hand. You got the, you got the, hey, they might go with a bomb here, so be alert. Yes. That's a good call. Just make sure you play the bomb. See, Rusty's not arguing the touchdown or the safety. He's not arguing that point. He's arguing the fact that the ball came out, the and they should have had it, regardless if it was a safety or not. Exactly. One more time, you see the hit. I don't look like a fumble to me. I mean, the referee obviously saw it a lot faster, but to me, it looked like well, there was okay. about the throw pass. He certainly didn't rule it incomplete. Yep. The hit seemed to cause the ball to jar loose. Oh. Bolts get a break. They're going bomb third and eleven. Intercepted. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Joey yeah. Ellums yeah. gets the ball back for the hit, but anyway, and. And Craig, did we just hear Rusty Tillman say that? Watch out, yeah. watch out for the bomb. Yeah, yeah. Had nothing to lose there. Lay it out yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, oh, ah. Joey Ellums, he calls himself the Hurricane. Why? Joe Ellums, I'm a natural disaster on the field for the other team. That's why they call me the Hurricane. Natural disaster. Hey, he's not a comedian, you know that, because that's exactly <laughs> what he was. No, I got the ball. One great thing about among them in the XFL, you get a chance to express yourself. That's who Joey Elms is. He didn't come up with a little moniker for us. I say thanks to the man up there, for real. And mom, are you home? Let you sit, Granny, get better. I love both of y'all. Take it short. If he's looking for Zola Davis, incomplete. Rolla, 25 years of age, out of South Carolina. Let's go. Toy right, fit, Toy right, 59T counter on the color. Ready? Charles Polari was in the movie Something About hey, Mary. Remember hey. that scene with Ben Stiller? Right. And he had the problem with his Frank, zipper. Franks and Beans. At the ambulance, he helped bring him out. Kirby Tarzan on the reverse. Car out of the 30. The former running back at Syracuse takes it down to the 15. Flag thrown to the play. 21 yard gain for a guy who's not run the ball since college but loves to do it. Well, Kirby told us yesterday that 
when he started off as a running back and moving to wide receiver. He said he, was, he, said he told us he was going to get a shot at it. Now, I believe we're going to see the holding here at the end. Yep. Locked up there, grabbing the jersey. Zola Davis locked up, holding on, nullifying that uh, nice run by Kirby Dardar. Told y'all. I told y'all. Hey, I told y'all. When I get that bitch, I'm rolling. Kirby still has the grass of his helmet. He had a I told you when I get that bitch, I'm rolling. The hold came from the point of the foul, so they do have the first and ten at the 30. So not a wasted play for Kirby Dardar. Here's Alliance trying to find room around the end and just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the Hitmen have had opportunities, and this is just uh, another one of them that they've got to they've got to finish it out. So far, haven't been able to to clean it uh, to finish it cleanly. Up only six nothing at this point. But you think left. the way they've been playing, Scott they'd left. have more points. Eight sixty six stop option on one already. So far, it's been a pretty gutsy effort for the Hitmen who. On fourth and one, you know, earlier decided, hey, let's try and get the six. Mm -hmm. and didn't get any points out of it. Good Firing. protection. Firing. That one is somehow grabbed by the hitman, Fred Brock, and it looked like Calvin Jackson should have the ball all along. But a yeah, yeah, put the flag of the play. But the hitmen are beating themselves again. You got a holding call back in the backfield. Man, you can't do that to yourself. Got a holding on number 77 offense, which they'll take. Previous spot foul. The British Big. McGee, the holding infraction. Previous spot. Holding. holding. 77, 77 offense, penalty 10 yards. Previous spot. Repeat second down. Look at the size of that guy. Why would he have to hold anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, get. Right there, you're going to check him out in the replay. Top of your screen, left tackle. Locking up on the outside, you can see he's got his arm across the throat of the defensive lineman. They're going to call that every time. Russell Tillman said that was one of the biggest problems from last week. They started beating themselves, causing their own problems, stopping their own drives. We'll start here again today. Hey, Polari throwing into traffic. He actually probably caught a break there. The Cosmo makes the catch. Okay. No, they're gonna say he did not make the catch. Oh, come on, baby. You're scared. Get out of my face, man. Get out of my face. <laughs> it was James Willis, the linebacker, the veteran on Birmingham, in the face of the Cosmo. <laughs> Anthony didn't want to hear from him. You gonna know something? Trio left. For years, Slide people. Left. For years, people have asked me what is said on the field. Right now, here in the XFL, you don't have to ask these guys what they're saying. You hear it. Every single time you want to go to a game or watch it on television. Third and 20, they're out of field goal range here. They need a play. Even if they don't get the first, Larry, room to run. Not the quickest guy there. He's way short. Only picked up about four. That would mean about a 53-yard field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. And it looks like, well, you don't know, really, with the kicker on, and hey, the punter. It's all right. You can hey, also have a fake hey, you guys right. have a room right to play with. Field. Don't let it bother you. Come on, Charlie. Tell them to get it up over there. We're going to be all right. Let's go. They can get fancy here because the ball only has to get to about the 12. That's the 25-yard mark on the punt. Once it goes there, particularly if it hits the ground, wide open ball, you don't even have to give the Bolts a chance to catch the ball if it hits the ground. Liz! Liz! Shut! Aragoose on the punt. Quincy Jackson right at the 12, a perfect 25-yarder, and he's knocked out of bounds. Let's take this opportunity to show you some of the punt return rules, courtesy of Bud Light. As you can see, we've told you no fair catches. The kicking team has to give the receiver a little bit of a danger zone, five yards around the receiver to catch the ball. And also, as we've said so many times, 25 yards. The kicking team ha can recover the ball after it has traveled 25 yards. Free ball. Anybody can get after it. Makes this punt, punt return very, very interesting. Well done, handing off. Bostic 
crunching up near the first down. You know, I thought Aragoose might punt maybe a 15-yard or let it bounce and, and let the sparks fly in that play. Well, no matter what the Hitmen have been doing so far, they hey, lead hey, only by hey. six points right now. That, that gives the Thunderbolts, gives the Bolts an opportunity to get back in. All it takes is one score. Hey, and if you remember too, Craig, last week, we talked so much about what Casey Weldon yeah, yeah. did at quarterback, uh, shit. but a lot of it was James Bostic. What Bostic did in getting the run game going, it took some of the pressure off of Welding in the passing attack. Yeah. Bostic. Six zip New York. 851 in the second. Bostic. You saw him that you know getting turnovers. You saw him just stripping the ball. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Rip, 135, boot right on ready hit. 135, boot right. All right, big third and two. Well, they can go either way here. Hit. Hit. Way action, but a whistle. I got you, Lag in the play. My ball. Thank you. Okay, back them up. Against the bolts. Illegal motion, gonna put them back. Ball start. 82 offense, five yards, down remains three. Quincy Jackson getting the jump in the touchdown last week, so now it's third and seven. And the Hitmen don't have to respect the run quite as much. You know, as you said earlier, though, despite all the problems on offense, 20, they're six points down. I mean, they're right in the game. Yeah, but the way the Hitmen defense is playing right now, the Bolts got to, this is, this is a long, long field for them to get down. Well, then, Diving catch by Quincy Jackson right around the first down marker. It is close. That should give it to him. Yeah. May call for the chain gang. See Casey Weldon one more time. A little bit slow getting up, but Man. we saw that all last week. This guy had took a beating last week. Starting up again on, on oh, today. Hit. It's oh, not man. for the 5,000 bucks, that's for sure. <laughs> Tell you what, he went down, you see his hands went oh. right to the ribs. End of the game last week, same thing. You saw him go to the ribs. Let's take a, in fact, let's take a look at what happened last week. This is against the Memphis Maniacs. He just got crunched throughout the game and still hung in there. Somehow kept the chin strap on for the most part and let his team back. Hey. Been knocked down four times already in this game. And they're never cheapies either, Bob. When he gets nope. hit, he takes a hit. Taking the pass right side. The left side wide open. Williams. Wide open. The defensive back fell down. Williams at the 20. The 10. And he's pushed out. Brad Shroud fell down. And a big gainer for the Bolts. Oh, my God. Well, I was talking before about how much yardage you have to cover against this tough hitman defense, but tell you what, if you can hit one of these, you don't have to worry about it. Blown coverage, defender falls down. Tell you what, as a receiver, that's one of the hardest catches to make when you're all by yourself and you know you, you don't have any, you have no, no reason to miss it. A lot of pressure. And a little time to work with. And they call a timeout, and Weldon ah. will come over. So yeah. all of a sudden, in one big play, the Bolts are back in business. Let's think through 24-25. The ball's away. Uh, hey, would you get the hell out of here? What yard line are we on? We're off on the four, Dave. You like 26-27, or we don't like it down here? Hey, come on. Everybody get up. Shit, we got... Save 28 for the, you know, we can set 28 up if we don't get on first down. I don't know that I like 24, 25, but we, you know, what I like that 28, 29. Uh, Reggie? Huh? We got one left, right? Wing right hot, 28, 29. Yeah, wing, you wing, play wing, choice now. Huh? Right. Wing right hot, 28. Okay, let's just come off the ball and go get it. So Casey Weldon's got the play after that 70-yard okay. game. And, you know, that's what killed the Hitman last week. The yeah. big, a couple of big plays, a couple of 
missed assignments. It's just man on man. You know, you can see you can see the concern on what from both right. of these coaches' faces. They know that this is not going to be one of those high-scoring affairs. Yeah. Every point that gets on the board is going to count. It's going to count big time on who wins this. Big East Division oh, yeah. battle. Both teams looking for their first win. First and goal, Boston. Oh, he's met by Big Merck. Ron Merkerson, another flag yeah. down to the play. Yeah. Okay, back to hey, No, no, not today. today. All right, where did it uh, go from the previous spot? Big Merck came in. 63 offense, penalties oh. 10 yards. Previous spot, repeat first down. Well, the Hitman shot themselves in the foot on the last series with two big holding penalties. That time, Antonio Fleming out of Georgia. Guys, hold them out as a touchdown. Hold them out. That was right. 76 special on one. Up here left. Coach calls him affectionately overweight. <laughs> Talk to him. Weldon. Again, Rush delivers to the flat. It's Boston. He's knocked down by Wheeler after a gain of seven. Good poise by Weldon, though. Under yeah. pressure, he was able to dump off to the outlet in Boston. I'll tell you rip, what. I, rip, I, rip. I know he's not enjoying the hits, but he's certainly got a lot of poise. I'm giving it to Weldon. Rip I don't eight. care what they got going on back there in Birmingham with the, between Weldon and Jay Barker. Let's go. Rip. Rip 80. You flat. On ready hit. If I'm if I'm a player on that team and seeing what Jay what what, uh, what uh, Casey Weldon is going through, I'm, I've got all the respect in the world for this guy. Second and goal. Weldon, lots of time. Fire wide open. Touchdown. Quincy Jackson. The Bolts have tied up the game. Oh, I love it. Well, Quincy Jackson took it to the end zone and pulled up short, just just across the end zone. Number 26, Joe, Joey Elam just did not recover. Watch Elam's here. Did not recover in time to make the play. It's a big eight. I don't know what Elam's was looking at. Wing right hot. Wing right hot. 60 on one. Oh, here's the big extra point again. No, nothing automatic. Not even close. It's not even 50 percent. The teams are making this. About 40 percent in the lead. This for the lead. Weldon rolling, going right side. He's short, and they did not get it. Reggie Johnson made the catch, but it remains a tie game. There you see Quincy Jackson scored the touchdown. Nice route, short one, pulled it up just just north of the end zone. But uh, once again, Casey Weldon proving that he can take a hit. And he can take the hit and still get the pass to where it's supposed to go. Fortunately, the problem with Weldon is he's not getting a chance to see how the end of his passes are, how his passes are ended up. Bob, the temperature here in a February game in New York, 31 degrees with a wind chill, 6 degrees. Maybe a little warmer tonight in Memphis. But the other game tonight, the Las Vegas Outlaws, so impressive in week one. We'll head to Memphis to take on the Outlaws in a battle of undefeated and supremacy in the Western Division. In Vegas at Memphis. Chris Marlowe, Brian Bosworth, and the gang will have it for you. Rashad Salam had a huge week for the Maniacs last week. 154 yards, couple of touchdowns, leading the Axe to their two-point win over the Bulls. How are the cheerleaders staying warm? Some out. Tell you what, I can't complain. You see them with their dancing around in. <laughs> hey, no way I can complain anymore. I'm just glad you're not dancing around in that bump <laughs> for all of us here. Well, you're not watching me, are you? 6-6. Six, six. How's that ball feel against a frozen foot? Dardor at the 12. He can fly through the 30s, punch down at the 34-yard line after the 21-yard return. Patrick Scott, nice tackle. But it pretty much grabbed Dardar by the neck. It <laughs> just yanked them down. Beautiful. Oh, man. I just love this game. Unbelievable. 84 yard drive for the Bolts. Got them tied up. But the big difference again. The extra points. Neither team able to convert. 
There's Valeri. Oh, screen. Oh. Elias, but he's hit for a loss. James Willis read that right from the beginning. Had all those linemen pulling out in front to block for that screen pass. Uh-uh. Willis would have nothing to do with that one. Hey, you think he's enjoying this or what? <laughs> you are the man. Willis, You're the man. Let's go for the man. Willis told me he doesn't want to be a beeper guy. Because he said his mother told me told him that you have to speak politely. So he's trying to curb his language if he can out of the field, but he's enjoying it. You can hear his enthusiasm. Well, Larry, the bomb, nobody there! And nearly picked off, in fact. Really should have been grabbed by Eric Sloan. Great Incomplete. Bad throw by Valeri. And he's hearing the boo birds from the New York crowd. Well, Tillman and, and, and company trying to get it all back at once. Since neither one of these teams have really sustained a long, long drive. You know, no trying to take a page out of the out of the book of the uh, of the bolts and just throwing it and getting a big chunk right off the bat. But Sloan there to make the play. Talked about the wind chill of six. Of course, that affects the passing game, the cold yeah. weather. Polari, though, just three of eight for 12 yards and one interception. Too much. The play clock. Number seven offense, five yards. Down remains three. Ooh. And the Boo Birds continue. You know, the play clock again, only 35 seconds. You got to be a little crisper, mm. a little sharper in the XFL. That's the second time they've had that. Delay of game penalty. Now third and 18. Amazing momentum yeah. swing in this game. Hey, Get ready. Get ready. Cody McGuffey has come in right there. Trying to quick kick. kick. It's over anybody's head. It's a free ball free right ball. now. Free ball. Watch the bounce. Calvin Jackson grabs it for Birmingham at the 22. So the quick move with the backup quarterback. And if nothing else, got the ball the other way. Although, of course, the Hitler were looking to spring a wide receiver to get the ball. On the way up, Rusty pulled on, one out of his bag of tricks. Hey, uh, tied at Giant Stadium. Hey. Gloves, unlike everybody else. Well, the nice safe pass. Stephen Williams is thrown down by David Wheeler. Man. A, a suplex. Well, we've Very heard, nicely done. We've heard the crunching. What does it feel like to be on the other side? And what, what, what does your head feel like and sound like after a big hit like that? You, you want to know something on, on the inside of the helmet as, as the hit or, or the hit E. You, you don't really Double hear it as much. I mean, you can only think about it. I mean, it becomes so second nature. But, you know, when I, when I sit here as a guy who did that and I listen to it, I can't believe that we went through that, man. That is so, of course so you pounded. Of course, you, you put the defensive side of the ball, too, which is... Yeah, I was a hitter. You were a hitter. And I had quite a few concussions, too, so a lot of things I forgot. Israel Rayvon made the stop. Third down. Israel. All right, come here. Come here. Well, this defense, this hitman defense. Nickel under smack zoned all, right? Ron Murkerson calling out the signals. Yeah. Team Colorado. Right, team right. Rusty told us that he, uh, Rusty Tillman told us they do like the zone dog defense. Big Murph, tough guy, is dad a pro boxing trainer. He's on the move, trying to get welded, but Casey gets it off again to Williams for the completion and the first down. Step we didn't have Williams. Any pressure. Well, Rusty's got to be a little frustrated because the, the part of his team that really set the tempo early on is, uh, is having a little problem right hey, now. Come on, we got the to defense. Quit out here. Get out of the way. Are we a nickel? We're a nickel. That is but That means an extra defensive back. Five defensive backs when you see, hear Tillman say nickel. Well, then play action, a good one. Take a boot. Rolling right, wants the receiver to move. That was going to run. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I Thank you, man. Good game by Casey Weldon showing some scrambling ability. A gain of eight. Oh, that's the challenge up there. Was that Joey Elams he faked out? Casey Weldon comes around with that naked boot, and as he got out there in the flat, defender came up, he gave him a little pump fake, and just locked the defender up. Let's get him an extra couple, three, four hand. yards. Trey left, 35 on one. Check him out as he comes here. Naked boot. Watch him. Yeah, here goes Elam. Front oh. up. <laughs> Take them right out of his jock. You better go uh, check with the equipment guy. Get a new one. <laughs> Time out of the field with a two-minute warning. Six.
six on a frigid day in New York. Go, go, go. Rather than the keeper on a second and two, they just wanted to get the first down. Guess somebody hurt. Guess somebody hurt. First down. Follow the block of the center, Ryan Thomasy, 290 pounder, number 65. Right. Trey left. Trey left. HI, 73 special on one. Need time. Got to go, Step. J.C. Stark, 121 yards. Set. Good eight. Go rip, rip. Good eight. Hit. In motion and stuttering is McGuire oh. across the middle. Oh. Boston. Oh, he's oh. crunched down oh. by Mike Barber. Mike Barber with a hellacious hit oh, on Boston. Well, they're going, looks like they're going no huddle, taking it right to the line of scrimmage. 71, regular 71. And no timeouts. Yeah, you don't get the stoppage unless you get the first down for the placement. <laughs> well, they got to move quickly. Oh. Weldon comfortably got him. Williams again. Oh, and Adams playing off the receiver. Off. He's pushing off, man. You know, Bob, you heard Ellen say he's pushing off. We, I thought I, I saw that in the touchdown as well. You cannot do little, that. little nudge at Ellens. You know, you're going to have a little nudging, but it's going to happen if it all comes down to the referee, what he wants to call. Some will call. I mean, we've seen it games all, you know, for a long time. It all comes down to, you know, what, uh, how close, go, how go, loose go. or tight the referees are calling it. We're talking about pushing off. We got number three. First down, and Weldon hey, looks and comfortable now at QB. Black 41. Black 41. Hit. Bostic. He drops the ball. Still loose. Weldon may have jumped on the ball. Get it. Get the ball. White's got it. White's got it. The ref saying the Whites got it. White had it first. Hey, 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 I got him. I got him. I got him. Easy. Hey, let me just tell you this. Bob, what's it like to be in the middle of a scrub right, like that where you're just stop. fighting for the ball? All you do is you go and you try and get a hold of the ball. You pull it. I don't care. Right, the play's down. over. You just steal it. You can. You know, everybody's got their excuses. That No, I had it the whole time, man. You tell him. Be alert to run. Coming up at the half, it's the XML All Access brought to you by Burger King. We'll take you to both locker rooms for an inside look as the players and coaches break down the first half. The Burger King XFL All Access at halftime. 42 seconds and counting. You weren't insinuating that I would bite somebody down the oh, bottom, did you? I wouldn't hold it against you. That time, good coverage on Williams by Ellums. Lock ticking. 29. Clock running down, 24 seconds. They better hurry up here. Right now, they got a 49-yard field goal attempt. Although they do have a very good kicker in Brad Palazzo. They may only have time for one play, and it might have to be out of bounds toward the sideline. Weldon. Over the middle, got a receiver. Clock running, and that's going to do it. And they were stopped. That's right. And any chance you get to score points when you're putting up these kind of numbers, bad numbers offensively, you got to take them. Elias, listen to that pounding he's taking. Theon Fox made the hit. Hey, you know, we showed you his stats after the time about Elias after the first half. 13 carries, 41 yards. We told you they were all hard fought yards. What a way this guy runs, man. This guy is just tearing it up. Hey, you! Charlie! Tell me to play! You know, there's been a couple of times he's come out of a, uh, he's come out of it saying, hey, tell me to play. I wonder what kind of communication they got going out there. Elias again crunched by Chris Schelling. What heart from that running back was 5'10, but his heart's just about. The entire side. Hey, let's give it to Elias. But I'll tell you what, Shelly, as a defender, ain't nothing you like better than when a guy carrying the ball has left his yeah, feet. Line up. Not the kind of series the Hitman wanted to come out with. Live ball here after 25 yards. When it gets to the 35 here, it's live. Both rip, rip. return men are creeping up toward that marker. Aragoose with a big corner. 
Drop there by Williams. Free ball. And the Bolts appear to have recovered it. it. Looked to me, though, like Donnie Caldwell had a great chance to get that ball, and he sort of dove over number 21 for the hitman. Just play it, just play it, just play it. And it, again, the little plays here, Bob. But watch 21 Caldwell. <laughs> Try to pick it up and run with it, but uh, could not get a ball bounce right back into the receiver's hands. Hit! Well then. Nice pass again to Williams. He hangs on this time at the 35. Hey, Craig, I want to know what happened to that what happened to that hitman defense we saw in the beginning of the first half. They were aggressive. They were getting pressure on on Casey Weldon. They were getting uh, they were they were knocking the receivers around. Double now set. these receivers are finding Double a lot of open, or uh, open spots to get find and uh, complete the passes. Casey Weldon is one of those reasons, Bob. Father of four, one of the greatest set. passes in Florida Blue State 35. history. Still with the urge to play. Blue 35 hit. <laughs> Boston. There's that hitman D. Ray Bond again with the stop. Oh, Big Mamu came in, man. He just stoned him. The back side. It's the back side. Back side It's got to be a play here. Or unless they, they might be playing to it now. Chris, Chris Mamalonga had a nice hit on Boston on that one. He just left walks left. away like a like Man. walks away like a, a gunslinger after a big like battle. 90. Right, 90. Hit. They're coming for him. Oh. The blitz. Quick pass. They were ready for it. And Williams in the flat makes the catch. And is knocked down by Wheeler and company by the Hitman. But another big game. First down for Birmingham. Oh, Stafford Williams. A third round pick for the Dallas Cowboys. Had some big years there. His dad, an assistant coach, Stafford says he's going to become a high school coach when his playing days are over, but he's not ready to leave the good iron yet. Seven catches, 129 yards for Williams, the favorite receiver for number 11. And the motion is Quincy Jackson. Ellen's that time on the receiver, incomplete. The hurricane, and his wind was felt. Well, you know, Rusty, Til Rusty Tillman knows who's hey, causing who the that, problem. Who's play, who's it's Casey play? Walden. When he has time to throw the ball, he's going to find a receiver. He's taking a chance. He's saying, listen, I'm coming for you. I'm bringing a blitz, and I'm going to knock you down, and I'm daring you to go one-on-one -on -one with my corners on the outside. Well, so far, they fared pretty well. So far, so good. Of course, so uh, Adams was beaten on the touchdown. Bostick. Running in a big hit. Oh, oh Brad Trout. <laughs> and that fish was swimming upstream and he ran into Trout. Whoa, what a hit. Oh. 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 Hit. Nice, nice game by Bostic, but paid the price at the end of that. I'll tell you what. Safeties. Guys are deadly. Why would hey. you play this game? Black <laughs> <Man, laughs> 90. Because it's fun. It's a crazy it's fun. Black 90. Third and two. We got a man open in the flat. Now he's going long. Williams open originally, and Bolton was at it. He still paid the price that time for Ty Talton, and so did Weldon on the other end. And Casey very slow to get up. Well, the hitmen were covering the entire field that time. Big Sab on him. Big Sab chasing down Casey Weldon. Dwayne Sab has been in Casey Weldon's face and introducing him to the Giant Stadium turf throughout this game. Live ball the punt. 21 yard line. To go 25. This one is hung up there. Kirby Dardor at the 10. Dardor. Look at Dardor. Oh. He's the putter, but he's grabbed from behind at the 50. You all right? You all right? The Lazo, Fox made the stop. 
Palazzo did a nice job of forcing him back inside. Come on, midfield with the Hitman take over. It's six steps great to go. Despite the temperature dipping into the 20s, a windshield near six degrees, and my paper's flying all over the place up here. A crowd of over 36,000, 36, 458 turning out for the Hitman opener. And the passion and desire, well, I don't have to tell you about it. You can see it. Keith Elias for a couple of yards. Now the fans, of course, would like to see the Hitman O get going. They've got chances in the game. They've not been able to put enough points on the board, but find themselves in a real fight. Check color. Check in the kind Check of color. game you're kind of expecting this kind of weather. Yeah. Right it out. Hard hitting. And uh, last man with the ball might win it. Elias. This time picks the left side for a few yards. Big Jimmy Brumbaugh, number 96. A guy who told us he was making boxes in Montgomery, yeah. Alabama hey. before this. And you know something, Bob? There are lots of boxes. He goes bolt boxes, there's big boxes, TVs, yep. and he's a big man too. 287. Start, kind of sound like like Forrest Gump with that shrimp thing. <laughs> That's right. Little boxes, big boxes. Dardar, the reverse, it worked before, but they had the penalty. This time, though, he's run out of bounds. Keith Franklin made the play, well read, and he lost four yards. Both these are starting to step it up a little bit. Good field position for the for the hitman, but uh, boy, there's it's instinct up front. These guys got to go. It starts getting cold. They got to get warmed back up for a little time in the in the locker room. Check it out again. This is fourth down. The punt, the number 25 yards. The ball is free. Just has to get to the 22 to reach the 25 yards. Mark to get the ball free, but Arab is going to punt uh, punt another bomb. Williams will drop back to the five. Elias missed it. Here he goes. He's got some room. Only the punt of the beat. And he's got a beat. Stepford Williams is going the all the way. The only other guy with a shot at him was our cameraman. He elected to get out of the way. 95-yard touchdown for Stepford Williams. Unbelievable. He has had an incredible job today as a wide receiver. Now we're turning the ball. Touchdown, Birmingham. You're right, Craig, man. Our cameraman, our, our camera guys out there, pretty well trained. Just keep it right up there with them. Not easy with the speech to like Williams, who's been the big man on offense. I'll tell you what, this 29 is. 29 yards catching, and now that big play. This hurts the hitmen big time. So we'll uh, let's see if the Bulls can get their conversion. Again, no kick. They're going to run it in. Under 40% for the league on the conversion now. Big play of the game. Well, then, firing. And it is caught. Keep of McGuire for the extra point well earned by the ball. And they lead 13 6. Here's Williams again. And he makes it, makes a right cut, takes it up inside. Only guy that can get him was the punter right there. Cannot make it. A rusty Tillman, a former special teams coach. Not going to be happy with what's happened on that team, with that top play. So the Hitman now down by seven, midway through the third. Go win this game, man. Hi, I'm Dee. And during the week, I handle all kinds of animals working as a veterinary assistant. But on the weekends, there's not a soul on earth that can handle the animal in me as I cheer for my New York and Jersey Hitman. Well, it says in the media guy that D has a tattoo, black cat in location unknown. I haven't heard about parts unknown since the World, Good. Wrestling, the World Wrestling Federation. That's where you hear that. Good from, kitty. From parts unknown. Good kitty. <laughs> Somehow they're staying warm, and it's not easy today. But they're entertaining the crowd here at Giant Stadium, where the Bolts have bursted to a 13-6 lead, and they have got their passing game intact. Yeah. And then the big return by Williams. Dar Dar, he can return it. The 20. Calvin Jackson threw him down at the 27. Longtime Miami Dolphin defensive back. He's a leader back there. First and 10. Calvin Jackson, number 38 for the Bolts. Well, let's see what happens with Rusty Tillman. This time, he's got to take this team. He's got to get the offense working. 
it's all going to come down to to how they can I, I think not just Elias and run the ball who's got about 56 yards already but polari has got to get to the game the ball in the air a little bit he's got to drive this team Ten. Round 23! Round 23! Still staying patient, and he hands it off. But Elias in trouble, and Keith Franklin scooped him up. For a loss, and the Boo Birds are coming, New York style. On, man, I tell you what, you're not going to get, especially when the game's been as tight, and defense has been as tight as it have been today, there's no way you're going to get a drive started by just relying on Elias. He's a hard worker, but you can't give it to him all day long. You wonder about the confidence he has in Polari, confidence that was at an incredible high in the preseason when he was really throwing the ball. If I'm a defender, all I'm looking for right now is Elias, and that's the guy I'm going to hit. Passing down Polari. Firing. Receiver pretty well covered. Zola Davis and Dwayne Butler all over him. Incomplete. You know, Ron Meyer, the coach of Chicago, told us, he said he thinks Polari's arm, you can ride to the championship. Nobody around here would think that yeah. watching the first two weeks. But again, today, not conducive to the passing. The New Yorkers don't want to hear about excuses. Right, yeah. That's That's for sure. We told you about it coming in. This is a tough crowd to please. And they have, uh, they're letting the team know right now that they keep it up this way. It ain't going to be an easy ride for them. Big third down. They're just one for five on third down today. Third and 14. Valeri batted oh. at the line of scrimmage. And... Another three and out for the hitman. Johnny Mitchell got a piece. Mitchell out of LSU. So now again, the punt. Hang out of your hats here. 50 yard line, and it's a free ball. Gallagher's been a busy bee. Free ball right now. Williams picks it up, and this time elects to go out of bounds with the coverage on him. And the Bolts will take over at the 44. Williams accounting for over 200 yards now for the Bolts. Well, Williams did a smart move there. All he's got to do is get out of bounds. It's so hard to score points today, and all it's up to the Bolts right now, they just got to have to keep the chains moving, keep the clock move, moving, and just uh, every time it comes down to it, it goes on this guy's shoulders, and so far he has not responded. Rusty Tillman told us he expected Valeri to have a, a good game today, although probably relying more on the run than the pass. Plastic in the backfield. He's crunched hard. Tim Beauchamp made the play. Charlie, what's happened to the offense? Right now you guys can't move the ball at all. Oh, right now the foot is not there for the running game, so we're going to try to pass the ball. And I you know the last play, the guy was open, and then the D lineman tipped the ball. So we'll come back next drive and score. It's all right. I made it sound easy. Well, the uh, patience may be okay with Charles Polari, <laughs> but I don't think this guy who came out to watch the game today with the fans here have quite as much patience. But that's why I've rolled it oh in. My. Still got it off. What a great catch by Cable McGuire. How did Weldon get that ball off? I mean, he had Brad Trout right in his face, knocked him down, 14-yard pickup, and that has been the difference, the poise by Casey Weldon. You know, Brad Trout coming, you see him right there. Weldon saw him. Weldon knew the guy was coming, and he still threw that ball on target. Beautifully thrown ball. But there was a... With a oh, it was an ineligible receiver downfield. Previous spot, repeat second down. Oh, that's a tough one, because that had nothing to do with the offensive play for... Well, I'll tell you what. The Bolts. And uh, Mike Edwards downfield. Oh, he's downfield. So Leonardo very upset that his team uh, getting called back. But once again, you know, I've seen, I have seen a lot of tough players playing pro football. Casey Weldon is one of the toughest guys I, I've seen in a long, long time. Oh, he was buying time. What happened to Quincy Jackson who ran out of bounds? Is Walter was trying to buy time, so now because of the loss of down on the penalty as well, it's third and 16. Stay in bounds! <laughs> Stay in bounds! Hey, you know, if he's going to sit back there and take the hits, 
that he's da damn sure should be able to tell these guys where they're going to go. You know, the what? problem with the Quincy, it looked like his footing, it is getting kind of slick out there. It looked like his footing wasn't good, and he's trying to cut back in bounds. Just couldn't get the, the, the traction. Well, I don't know, Bob. I, thought, I don't know if his head was in the play. There. You saw Weldon just trying to buy time. All he had to do was stop, and he kept running out of bounds. And he's been taking, well, the play clock looks like it ran out here. Some of that due to Casey Weldon arguing with his wide receiver that you just heard. So now instead of third and 16, make it third and 21. Trips left, Z high. 86, Z take off, wide tag on one. Read left, read left. Okay, Receivers okay, all okay. out to the right. Okay. Set. Okay. And one on the near side. Hit. In motion is Gord Dunn. Weldon's going to run. Stutter stop, but he didn't slide. He tried to still even 10 yards shy of the first down. Man, Casey Weldon is a tough customer. Not necessarily smart on that play, but you got to admire the guy's courage. You know, 32 years old, he's still out there. He loves playing this game. Uh, we've seen him play it for years, but it, he thought he had a shot here. He could have slid. Took the easy way out, but he thought he could make a move. I don't know. Next time you think you can make a move on a safety, I think maybe you should just go down. <laughs> Dar Dar will move up to the 16 to grab the puck. Oh, Big nice shot hit. by Caldwell on the block as Dar Dar got past the 25 to the 26. But Donnie Caldwell, <laughs> 21, with a huge hit on the return. Can the Bolts do anything at home? Find out. We come back. This is Jessica Corner here, and I'm here with Haven Fields, biggest number one fan. How do you think he's playing today? Yeah, Haven's the man. He's a good ball player and a good guy. The hit men are lucky to have him here tonight. How's the baby boy doing your head? The baby boy's doing great today. Haven Fields. Credits his mother back home in Miami for so much of his upbringing, but also the two people you were just introduced to, Lois and Robert Taylor's adopted parents from Alabama. Here at the game, Larry throwing to Michael Blair in the crowd with these sarcastic cheers. He finally made a completion, just a tenth of his XFL career after he was hit hard in 30 attempts. Well, you know, let's tell, let's tell Charles Polari that if you pass the ball, now well, Casey Weldon actually can tell him when you pass it. Sometimes you take the hit. Oh. Patrick Scott on the crunch. Somehow I don't remember it sounding like that. Who's 24? Man. This guy's must be hitting hard or something. There's Elias. He's met. Well, not much there. Schelling and Dion Fox made the stop. Oh, well, Dion's an interesting story. Guy's got a record label going, but loves his football and. Uh, Jumped at the opportunity to play in the XFL. 57, Deion Fox. Slide right left, here. slide right. 284, corner crab. I'm already. Like I said before, they all know it's on Elias. He's the only one having success in that offense. But the footing's bad. You saw in that last play, he couldn't even make a cut. It's got to come down to Polari, and if he can't throw it, they can't win. At what point do they think about going to the backup? There's a good throw the oh. ball. They're tight end and not look back. Block is hitting, and the hitman. They're not on the same page. They had that play open right there if they were on the same page. You know, the part of being a great receiver is not just going out and running a route and being able to catch a ball. Part of being a great receiver is knowing when to find an open spot and laying there for it. He had the seam. He took it up in there. He should have looked around oh, for the ball. Staying in block. 68. Strong option. On one, ready? Hurry up. Charles Polari. He's got to find some uh, confidence somehow and somewhere, and he may need a play to get that going. Deion Fox looking to blitz. Valeri, he finds, completes it to Cosmo at midfield. Keeps going to the 40-yard line. You know about it. You know about it. Anthony De Cosmo and Petrina must have loved that one. Gain of 16. Well, you saw Valeri take the shot before. Flex right, check. What, what? What's his yeah. yeah. At the 40 now, the hitman trying to get something going. Then a Polari wearing some of that giant stadium turf. Little memory of two plays ago. Not, not a good sign for a quarterback, <laughs> that's for sure. 
Polari complete. He's got Fred Brock. I mean, you like your helmet if it starts Holy out Holy. black and blue to stay that way and keep the your body from becoming that. But, well, the green is not one of the team colors. Last time we checked. Well, last week he had problems with the short game. He had problems with the intermediate That's game. He could not right. find those passes. Slide left, 284 corner crab. One more, ready? Could not get the touch right on that. We saw even early in the game he seemed to be really that just right. off a little bit. Now the last couple plays he's finding it. Some people hit. said he couldn't take any hit. It appears that hit may have jarred him right back into the Green game. 80. Yeah, he's got a long way to go in taking hits. Well, Larry, that one, look out, it's popped up and nearly again grabbed by Johnny Mitchell went after the deflection. That's about the third or fourth deflection at the line by Polari, which begs the question, is he throwing the ball too low near the line of scrimmage or not? Are these guys just too big? Well, part of the problem is that when these guys get down to the sidelines, everybody right here. when these guys are pass rushing to get locked up in the line of scrimmage, a lot of times all they can do is get the hands up. A bit of a quarterback controversy last week in Birmingham. Same story perhaps here as Cordy McGuffey on the sidelines getting some of the interest of the fans here at Giants Stadium, even if they don't know who he is right now. He's the backup. There's a catch. Tight end. And it's the Cosmo actually on the grab, but that's good enough, it appears, for the first down. And the Cosmo has been a favorite receiver. Well, no sense in, in making in, in going for the long Court game right now. Run out. Like I oh, said, they. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. You can hear him trying to cheer, get his team going a little bit. Couple of successful passes going into the fourth quarter. He's hoping they can keep that up, keep the drive alive. Hitmen want to capitalize on the move. They trail by seven. Good one. As we go to the fourth. My work as an aerialist demands timing, focus, and hours of grueling practice. Hi, my name is Ma'am. And you know, a lot of people thought I was taking a risk cheering for the hitmen. <laughs> Believe me, I know all about taking risks. And there she is, Ma'am, an aerialist. She work in a, one of those every day. She work in a circus or what? Dogs are also you, actually contortionists. Where do you find an aerialist? A circus? It's one of the places. <laughs> well, tell me where else. I can't. Uh, you go to own the show out in Las Vegas or, you know, <laughs> there's, there's performers. Aerialist College. First and 10 at the 30. They're warming up. Here's Archie. Lost the 30. Gain of about six seven yards hey, good play you know what you can't sit there and keep getting the ball off but when you get the short pass game going you loosen the linebackers up they're not as not as free to come flying Wide up jet. and making a play flex left 56 power on one ready and down by only seven there's no urgency to have to pass they're right. only one score down of course the big difference could be though the extra point there's no given by any means elias always oh, crushed by James Williams. We are here with some of the New York fans. How can you be out here like this in 32 degree weather? Oh, we're having a great time. We're loving everything we're doing. We're having a great time. You're crazy. How can you do this? Crazy. Yeah. Uh, he's got a bunny too. Well, they always come in pairs if there's one of those guys. Yeah. Look at oh, these guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, this isn't December. This is February. Polari. Quick pass over the middle. Dar -dar. Got it. Around the 15. Kirby, valuable guy. His, his eyes lit up when I asked him about running. <laughs> yeah, he loved being a running back. When they moved him out to receiver, he keeps waiting for that opportunity. In fact, he told us today, he goes, they told us yesterday, he said, listen, that may be working into that running right. scheme just a little bit. The thing he was impressed of, as he said that, Polari became more of a leader this week around the team, getting the receivers together and really trying to get on the same page. Archie, for a couple. Charles Preston, what a huge week one. He was their defensive star last week with a stop. Hey, Craig, you know, pass, handing the ball off in a running play is one thing. But to run a delayed draw like they just did, ain't nobody buying that. 
mean, these guys are so cold, they just want to go ahead and hit somebody. You got to either hand the ball off and run right away or throw the ball. You saw the shot of the cheerleaders, Rusty Tillman in the NFL, ready? never worried about fraternizing with the cheerleaders. In fact, he married one. He married one of the Sea Gals of the Seattle Fred, Seahawks. Yeah, option, option. Hey, they were cute. So Fred he doesn't mind his day. players Fred perhaps uh, fraternizing Fred here in the 80. XFL. Spikes the ball. Did he make? Well, he tried to spike it at the last second as he saw the play clock coming down. Like <laughs> they got him again. And this is just happening over and over today. I mean, come on, the, the, the play clock is right in front of these guys, right at the end of the stadium. It ain't that hard. Joe, you guys get time. Tell Joe, has been a victim Joe. of the play clock. So second and 16. The yards are too precious in the game like yeah, this left to face. be able to give up five here and 10 there. Oh, 68, strong option on one. Ready? Gun, gun. Hey, the number of hits that Casey gun, gun. Wills has taken, I can imagine. I can see him missing Red. one or two. Red 80. Red 80. Cut. Valeri with a blistering win. Firing. Damn. He's got it. Right around the goal line, maybe at the one. Fred Brock made the catch first and goal. 20 yard game. What a catch. First and goal. New York fans don't have great memories, that's for sure. You see a good rush coming around the Polari stand in that time. Damn. The last time they got to fourth and one in the first half and were stopped. They can't afford that here. Archie, he stopped. He got the first touchdown. But Charles Preston met him right in the backfield. And the worst thing I ever see is when, when you need a yard and you start seeing running backs pussyfoot. They get to the line of scrimmage and they start going, where's the hole? And they slow down and they start looking. Like, you know, put your head down and stick right, it up right somebody's left. butt. You think you do that there? Right. He's used Archie, although Elias has gained some of the tough ground. He's gone to Archie in close. Archie again. Got a hole that time. And bangs in for the touchdown. Hey, that's it. Bolts 13, Hitman. They got 12. Here comes the extra point, and I'll tell you what, Greg, you were talking before about the percentage of, of uh, successful extra points as they run them or pass them in. It is not good. Yeah, well, actually, yesterday was the best, eight for 17 yesterday, but only about 40% in the league. So 60% of the time you're getting stopped, and in this game, it could be the difference. 13-12, hang on. Right, right, right. After running right, or right. passing, you only get one right. point. And he calls it, that's another thing, he calls a timeout trying to get that all-important point. And you won't see that when you're kicking for it. <laughs> hey, you know. timeout before you kick for an extra point. Hey, hey, coach, 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 we got to talk. They got my voice on the last one. They can hear me the play. I don't care. Right. Throw the play. That ain't the point. We didn't have the right person on there. All right. Hey, uh, hey, Charlie, that's, that's the brakes when you got an all-access pass. Everybody hears you, not just you at home, the fans here experiencing the game also hear what you are hearing. A look back at the touchdown, Bob. Yeah, nice cutback. Not too much messing around. He found the hole, drove up through it. Good job of staying on his feet. I don't know what Polari's complaining about, talking about his voice carrying on the loudspeakers. Everybody that needs to hear him on the field is standing right there. As he's calling, if he's calling any of the uh, the audibles, they hear him at the line of scrimmage. All important extra point for the headman. Right, right float on the color, ready? And the two touchdowns have been basically straight up the gut runs by Archie. As tough as, as, the two. as these defenses are, they got to get this. The Cosmo in motion flag. Hey. And boy, if they have to go back All five, right. this yeah. makes it a lot five tougher. Zero. False start. Oh. Number 50 offense, but at least five yards. David Camacho, left guard, Mexican American, with a penalty there on the false start. Great story. One of six kids grew up. 
with his mom, his father died of a heart attack at the age of 28. The XFL on TNN is brought to you by Milk with nine essential nutrients. Got milk? By the United States Army, an army of one. And by Twix, it's all in the mix. The Hitman cheerleaders entertaining the crowd. I'm impressed with men because most of the girls have their leather jacket all buttoned up, but not men. The aerialist. Yes. She's a tough one. Even the players are all buckled up. <laughs> Verdine and Alexander. The Hitmen are down by one. Could not convert the extra point. Bubble! Ball free! Still free! And finally scoop! Still free! And somehow Alexander, who had a little juggling act, he might want to go into business with man. But he was able to pounce on it at the last moment. Wow. Not easy in the cold weather here. Good kick, Leo. Come on, somebody cause a fumble here. Voice of Rusty Tillman. Dig it down. Mark, Mark, come here. Well, the hitman almost took those words from the coach and made it happen. And Rust, Rusty up. knows how stingy these, stingy these defenses have been. And he's often scoring points. He knows he's got to take it away and get the ball back as soon as possible. Will they pass or run deep in their own territory? Bostic moving it out. And he gets the first down. Good run, James Bostic. Telling you before, in this kind of in this kind of footing, these guys just got to, if they're going to run the ball, it's got to be the quick handoffs. They've got to get it up inside. I love them just try and carry it up in field. we got a man down the field. The last night of the game in Los Angeles, there was an injury as you look at Mike Barber down, but it was great to see the spirit, really despite was. a broken leg, player putting his arms up to the crowd, everybody was cheering for him as he was helped off. Mike Barber, a little shake it up here. Both bones, tibia and fibia, both broken. And you saw him as they carted him off. The attitude, I mean, that's right here. I mean, this is what, this is, you know, barring everything else, this is the one thing that's just unbelievable about the XFL. These guys just love doing what they do. Mike Barber appears to be okay. Out of Clemson. And you know what, Craig? It is tough here because of the 38-man roster. You got seven guys on the practice squad. This roster, though, you can't afford these injuries. Last night when they lost two linemen, they were down to no backups at their offensive line. Well, you've got to be resourceful, especially with the rosters at 38. And, uh, 24, and back only a couple extra backups. There's Bostic again, finding some room. Look out! He's at the 30! Trying to work him down and can't get him. I'm trying to get him. Settles pushes him out finally at the 25. Wheeler got a piece of him. As he got by shot. Big pickup for James Boston. 60 yards. Stamp it. Just a simple counter out of the backfield, but he found the angle he needed. Every one of the defenders just didn't have an angle to make a play. And you see 36 Brad Trout going to make a play. Wheeler finally pushed him out, but too big of a game. Uh, Alexander's the, in the backfield. He's grabbed from behind after a gain as the clock ticks and the flag is thrown. See, the problem is, Rusty told these guys, Rusty Tillman told these guys, go out there and get the ball loose. Get a turnover. The thing is, when you start swatting for the ball, when you start focusing on the ball too much, you forget about tackling the guy. And then you start getting the big gains. You might as well say, yeah, that, you know, forget about it. You know, winning. Let's go, Let's go Nickel. Penley was a tripping call. Personal foul. Illegal leg whip. 77 offense. Penley's 15 yards. Previous spot. Would beat first down. Mike Edwards. The penalty on him. Well, the big game coming up. XFL fans will be in Memphis it don't matter. tonight. 
on UPN. The Las Vegas Outlaws and the Memphis Maniacs, both teams are undefeated. The winner will take the lead in the West Division in Memphis. Coming up on UPN at 7. And Vegas Here. team was so good last week. Memphis we saw last week. This is going to be a heck of a matchup tonight. Ryan for that, a big week for the Outlaws. Maniacs like to run a little more. Williams with the catch. And you talked about some of those hits. Paul Malonga hit him. Did he steal the ball? He picked it up. Flag is down. Referees appear to say that player was down before Christian grabbed the ball. Paul Malonga picked up the ball figured I'm going to run with it. Capel McGuire was just standing there. Mamalonga <laughs> ran into him. All right, dead ball, personal well, first foul. Back it up, 15. We'll call first ball 15. Foul. The late ball flag. 15. Hey, as big guys don't get the ball that often, when you get it, you try to do what you can. Go until they tell you to stop. Personal foul. Against the hitman. Big Mamu. Well, that is a huge penalty there. 15 yards. They got him at about 320 pounds. And I don't know, black. The color black's supposed to be the slimming. They really isn't doing anything for him. 34 or 24? I want. Romalaga said he looks at this is an opportunity. In fact, he told Vince McMahon that he, he could be coming off the top turnbuckle someday. That like 90. Second. No, blue 34. First and 10, I beg your Blue 34. <laughs> Alexander can't get him in the backfield. And he picks up five. <laughs> Let's take a look at the penalty just a moment ago. Oh. There was the shot. Huh. Remember when I said he picked up the ball, ran, and took a shot at Capo? Capo McGuire, what? receiver just standing there right in the throat. So Mama Longa hit with that. Good stiff arm, though. Well, Technique wise. Yeah. Not a smart thing oh, to do. No, not a smart. That's, that's way too costly. Of course, if, if he had the ball and it was on, the return, he gets away with that. Costic on the ground. Again, got free. Bad tackling by New York. And he's inside the tent. I don't know if these guys are just freezing up, what is happening, but these Let's go four, running three. backs for Birmingham just finding too many holes. Birmingham looking to add to their one-point lead. New York got on the board first. Archie in the first quarter. Jackson, a seven-yard catch, tied the game up in the second. Both teams could not convert. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Then the punt return in the third quarter by Williams, and they did get the conversion. Hitman came back with a touchdown here in the fourth, but did not convert, so they trail by one. Clips is on in the backfield. Oh, Weldon still has it. He tripped. And he wiggles right near the one. Great fake by Weldon. Oh, a good. Man. Casey Weldon. What nice a move. They saw everybody lining up defensively, coming in, making it, trying to make the big play. The Bolts have been running it inside. Oh, so the defense came into the inside. Look at that. Make it boot. Boy, if he doesn't slip, he is in. Tim shot made the crunching hit. Second. And goal. And that was big work. Ron Merkerson. Somebody, somebody else got him low. I didn't see who got him low, but Big Merck hit him high. Just about snapped this guy in half. Oh, it was Bochamp again. <laughs> Big Merck. Tell us how you really feel, Big Merck. Tough guy, down a pro boxing trainer, and he threw the big hit there. Third and goal. Now, do you go for the field goal if you don't get this one? We'll see what happens. Bostick. Running, oh. just stopped short of the goal line. Donato wanted the touchdown call. He did not get it. Decision time. I want 35. Time out. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait. Let the clock roll. We'll call time out. Fourth and one. They're gonna. They're gonna talk about it. Obviously, they're gonna 
discuss whether they should go for it or not. The key play, perhaps, in this game was a fourth and one at the same spot in the field in the first half. That's right. When Elias was stopped on fourth and one. Going into the end zone, he was stopped. And it, at that time, it could have given New York a 12 or 13 nothing lead. Six inch line. Donato is going down to see where the ball is. He's running down to the goal line to see just how far it is. Looking like a hands-on touch of a head coach, huh? He wasn't taking his players to word for that. You know, so other leagues, you're not allowed to leave that little coaching box. But here in the XFL, you can kind of wander around, go check it out yourself, man. You go tell that, go tell that line, go tell that ref on that line. When this ball crosses the end line, it's a touchdown. Yeah, well, let's go. 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 let us but he wants to remind them because uh, an inch here there. Fourth and goal. This could be for the ball game. They're going for it. Big decision. Well, then he's going to keep it. And they didn't get it. That's why Weldon wanted the ref to know because it was just throwing the ball out. And Big Murph and the hitman stopped them. Well, maybe, next, maybe next time you don't listen to the quarterback, but... I'll tell you what, when you got a defense playing, when Big Merck is playing like that. <laughs> he knows he just made the biggest plays of the game. He had the hit. Big Merck on Weldon. Hey, go low. I'm going up over the top. I'm going over the top. Wing right hot. Ten wins on one. I'm going over. Here it is from the, right dead on the Blue side. Of, you'll see Merck and Cern come up and just stone him at the line of scrimmage. Blue and eight. Hit. Great timing. And great job by the defensive line of getting into the offensive line and keeping them off the line of scrimmage. Weldon tried one more shot now as Blair tries to get out of the backfield. After the hit, you see him throw his right hand out, throw the ball across the goal line. <laughs> Gave it the old college try. Now the hitmen have a long way to go. Still in trouble. They're back up. Oh, get some push now. But they got a shot, and there's enough time with 4:40 on the clock. You know, as a defense, you, you know, right now you're saying, "Hey, we did our part. We gave up a little bit too much yardage, but we stopped them." Now it's up to you, O. Have two timeouts left. You got the stoppage at the two-minute warning. First downs will stop it as well. You get inside two. Backfield for a few yards. Blair gives him a little breathing room, but it'll set up a big third down, down play. Down. Ron, tell me about that defensive stamp you Jim, got. That was well Hey, that's where the men at. Down in the goal line, baby. You got to stop them. Hard north football, baby. Big Merck did his part. Now it's up to the offense, and this is a huge play. Huge third down and four. Hitmen have warmed up. They've made three of the last four on third down. Valeri. That is receiver. And he should get the forward progress. It's going to be close. Marcus hit made the catch. Let's see where they spot it. Ball was picked up. After that, they're giving a the referee's his touchdown. Marcus hit may have thought the play was stopped. With the Cosmo. That's, did he strip the ball? I didn't think he stripped the ball. Normally you get a forward progress call on that. Whistle. You didn't hear a whistle? Probably from the stands. From the stands? There was no, I told you about the from whistle the stands. Here we go. Well, Larry said he heard a whistle. Man. 
Okay, look. Shocking turn of events there for the New York New Jersey Hitman who thought at first they had a first down. Now a big play for the point, and this will give them the eight-point advantage if they can make it. And you, heard, be two scores. and you heard him say they thought they heard a whistle. The ref saying it must have come from the stands. This might be the game right here. Bostic, stop! All right, let's listen for the whistle on this play in the third and four to the Cosmo. So the break goes against the Hitman, and now the Bolts are up by seven, 3.04 to go. Back at Giant Stadium, the Hitman with a big stop on that extra point attempt. So they stay with a shot here, needing a touchdown and the conversion. So tie up the game, 3.04 to go, and a strange touchdown by the Bolts. Oh, the coach falls free! The Hitman trying to recover the ball. Right near midfield. All right, first down. I don't know if you meant to kick it down low. Or... Ball up by seven, and it works out to the Hitman advantage as Michael Blair, the gladiator, recovered the ball, and now <laughs> they're at the 48 yard line. What, what was that? Beautiful. I don't know. I don't, all I know is that the center on the kickoff return is not ever expecting that ball to come to him. Got to kick the ball deep there. This kind of time, make him go the length of the field. Polari. Over there, wide open is hinted. At the 40, inside the 35. You know, part of the problem is, is that when it gets this cold, the, the ground can get so hard that the cleats on the bottom of your shoes do not dig in. And, and as much as I'm seeing some of the receivers and running backs slide a little bit, maybe there was a slip by the kicker in the same way. But, I, I, but, I, but I've been on fields like this where the cleats don't get in. Usually if you have time, like at halftime, you switch into like a tennis shoe or an astroturf shoe. But obviously not enough time to do it here. Larry's got a receiver to Cosmo at the 15. Anthony to Cosmo. Larry's hitting up. He's hit nine of his last 13. Eric 18 Sloan. yard game. And Eric Sloan with a hit. Man, did he, he pop him. Huddle, 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 huddle. Cosmo working up against Sloan. Oh, excuse me, Chris Schelling with the pop. Figure be the safety making the big hit. Maybe the last play, Barney getting completion before the two minute warning, then a trouble getting the ball from the center, Juan Porter. Ball start, offense number 50. Dave Five yards. First down. Again, moving in. And they're knocked back five yards, but they are threatening as we go approach go the two-minute warning. Set. And they're not going to get the playoff in the shotgun. So the clock stops Biden with two minutes. Hitman again still have two Biden timeouts remaining. Goes, okay? We need a touchdown and the conversion to tie up the game. Come on, show the score, baby! Hitman with a shot. A fighter's chance at the two-minute warning. At the two-minute warning, the U.S. Army presenting victories in life, and certainly victory for Stepford Williams, who's bounced around in his football career. At one time, was the third receiver of the Dallas Cowboys a few years back, but he's starring in the XFL. Big 95-yard punt return earlier this game in the third quarter, giving the Bolts a seven-point lead with a 27-year-old out of Minden, Florida, Stepford Williams. He is our U.S. Army victory in life. He catches 134 yards. Now, let's set the scene here. Two minutes to go. Two timeouts. The cheerleaders trying to keep the fans pumped up. Valeria is warmed up. He's hit nine of his last 13. They need, oh, look out, the snap. 
and Valeri has to go out and at the 30, and right now the hitmen are going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Play well, after play. At first you saw Valeri trying to pick it up and try to make something out of nothing, but, you know, <laughs> you're down this far into, into the in territory, <laughs> just want to maintain possession. If you have to eat it down, you eat it down, but you've got to keep control of the ball. Problem for them is they won't get the cheap stoppage because the first down is way down at the five, and whistles before that snap. Thing, man, those snaps are coming all over the place. A shotgun blast. It's like that machine the coaches use to knock the ball backward. We're saying another full Illegal start. snap. Offense on the center. Five yards. Second down. They're a call. And that backs them up to the 35. At one time, they were at the 15 on three straight plays. They've lost 20 yards. Sometimes centers will fool around with the ball before they snap it. They've never actually pulled me off sides <laughs> when I played. But yeah, yeah. You never. Can see this. Sometimes they actually get called for it. Second and 30. Larry lost the handle that time. As the receiver, DeCosmo flags her down again. DeCosmo crunched at the 26. Flags again in the backfield. I'll tell you, the hitmen have just shot themselves to the foot again. As Polari was trying to gain control of the ball, their linemen doing everything to keep the, de oh. the uh, Bolts defense out, wow. including oh, holding. Hey, is this second down? Yes. I want a time. I want a time out. Both flags are for the same foul. Holding. Offense number 50. 10 yards from the previous spot. Check it out. Rusty Tillman has seen enough. He wants a timeout. As the hitmen have gone from the 15 now all the way back, they've lost 30 yards on four here. plays. Let's go, everybody! Everybody, let's go! What do we got now? Second down and what? Something you don't see often. Second okay, and 40. Everybody come here! Everybody come here! Hurry up! Everybody come here! Everybody come here. Everybody come here. Now let's listen to Rusty because I don't know what he can say Rusty now when these guys have dug this hole. Second down and 40. Tell them upstairs now. We got to pick up. Try to pick up about half of it, half of it again. We are going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Do you understand? That's right, We're going to win it over time. Now, let's, hey, we got one timeout left. We got to go. We got four downs. Now, let's do it. Come on. Let's go. We're going to go. Oh, let's man. do it. Let's go, Charlie. So the strategy here, Bob, is not to go for the bomb right away. Enzo, they've got time to play with. 127 is plenty of time. They've got one timeout. They're not going to get the cheap stop after the first down right. because they, uh, they have to get down to the five for that. Plenty of time, a little out pattern, even over the middle, to work down the field. However, the problem is it's second and 40. Right. Well, they've got, they've they've got, only... so they got three we're, plays because the field goal gets them nothing at this point. Right. Three plays to get down to the five-yard line for the first at least. He's on his own side of the field. He's going to go downtown to Cosmo going for it. And it was over his head. Sloan was oh, defending. Oh, well, he's, Cosmo was, is looking to the referee for a flag, and I'll tell you what, maybe he should have given it to him. The Cosmo looked like he lost his footing about the 10 or 15 yard line as he was running his pattern, and that may have cost him. Looks like... <laughs> good time up inside. He lays it out deep. Come on, better play! Eric Sloan went away. Go to flag, flag it! Hey, Cosmo, I'm with you, man. I, I think it was a good Watch no call. Play clock. Third Just and the 40. Valeri got some time. Going to pick up some yardage here. Wide open! Zola Davis, did he step out? Oh, he stepped out at the 20. And he could have picked up his 10 more. Zola Davis at the 20. Big pickup of 25 now. I think you're seeing more and more, Craig the way this field is, man. It is just, watch him at the end of this play. This guy's just trying to get some footing. Sliding all over the place. Well, it looks like a coat of ice is on the field, and it could be. This is it for the hitman. Fourth and 14. They've got to get to about the five-yard line. It's down to one play. Polari slipping himself. Firing Enzo. Traffic there. Tipped up and incomplete. Chris Schelling was there. Fred Brock hey, you, you, was hey, the intended receiver. Let's go, uh, and Rusty Tillman has hey. likely run out of time here with just a buck five to go and only one time out. <laughs> a lot of traffic in the end zone in that pass yeah. by Polari. Right, 
But with all those penalties, that's where you got to trace it. In four yeah. straight uh, plays. And it comes down to it. Yeah. If he could have kept this, Zola could have kept this footing a little bit far, but they still had to throw it. Right the there, defenders right knew that it was just a matter of sitting back and not giving them the first down. Over, over 36,000 turning out in absolutely frigid conditions, windy, swirling. Many of them not even wearing shirts to root on the hitman. And Rusty Tillman, it's a tough loss for him. His team should have had the chances to win it. And instead, they're going to find themselves on the short end. Let's look at the hit of the game. And now, the hit of the game is brought to you by Lugs, the boots and shoes with an attitude, because you never know what you might run into. Kind of hard to pick out one hit of the game in this one. A lot of, of bone jarring contact and grunts and and the sound of uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been contact. it's been one of those days. A lot of hitting and uh, I'll tell you what, I'm proud of these New York fans, man. They stuck out here. They stood there getting a, one hell of a football game. And for the hit man, I know Rusty Chillman is disappointed. They took one when they won oh, out there. Oh, they took they one when they won out there. I promise you. I promise you. That's correct. I promise you. They only had 10 guys and they took one. They took one when they had 10 guys in right? the house. Jerry's arguing about the timeouts on the board. One left, right? The ref's saying Please one left. Check. It says Please zero on the board. Check. Please check. Please, God. They do. Don't argue with me. I'm telling you what they do. It. Hey. Rusty Tillman expected his team to play a sound game. They had their chances. And they really had their chances in this game. They were stopped on that big fourth and one of the first. New York called the timeout at the two. All right, we'll take it. Last timeout. They came out the Wait a minute. They got first. Wait a minute. No. Okay. Yeah, there's no. They came out of the block very strong. Their defense looking good. Their offense just could not get on track. I know the frustration was there. But I think of anything else, towards the end of the game, yeah, that guy right there, Charlie Polari, started to look pretty good, at least in the short and intermediate plays. Other flag is thrown in the play. That's been the theme here for the last few minutes. Well, Charlie Polari had a horrible start. There was yeah. even a Polari suck sign in the crowd, and some of the fans were calling for the backup, although probably not too many could even name the backup right at this snap. point. But Polari came back. On the defense. Five yards, still second down. Polari warmed up, though, and nine for 13 run there in, a, in the uh, second half. And really, the penalties on that last drive cost him. Yeah. Had the footing been a little bit better, they might have been, been a little more successful. Guys messing around, slipping, not getting the hits. They might have been a little, bit, a little more successful at getting down and getting that the six points. You know what? Bob, normally these last seconds with no timeouts are just down in time. You could see the line trying to pick out the, the snap and trying to get the ball. Charlie, some of the fans were chanting, Charlie sucks. What do you respond to that? That's okay. I'm a grown man. I can take it. They have their opinion. That's fine. We didn't win today, so they can say whatever they want, which is fine. I'm from New York. I'm a big boy. I can take it. You can keep booing. I love it, baby. I'll be back next week and the week after. Uh, Charlie talking right back to the fans uh, as the New Yorker he is as time winds down here. And the New York Hitman fall to 0 and 2, tied with Chicago in the division. Well, only in the XFL are you going to hear that kind of repartee going on between the fans and the, and the starting quarterback. This is the XFL! Casey Weldon is at the helm for Birmingham. He had a big week last week, Bob. Threw for a week one high of 312 yards, a couple of touchdowns, but also an interception, and the offense was a little bit sluggish in the early going for Birmingham. And without a doubt, watch this Birmingham team. They, they revolve around the passing attack. 71% of their attack is passing, led by Casey, so they're going to have to bounce it up if they're going to be a good team. Cold, windy day at Giants Stadium. And they're passing first down off the Cape of Maguire. And he gets up near the first down. Oh 
11 yard gain is a first down for Birmingham. Trey left. Trey left. 35 or 25 on one. With the, I Colts, tell you, the Colts conditions, you expect the teams to run the ball a little more today? Yeah, you think they're trying to keep it on the ground, and not only the cold, but the breeze, too. There's a little 35. breeze blowing out there, which can affect them. Blue, 35. Hit. James Bostick is in the backfield for maybe a couple. And the Hitman D is pumped up. You know, Bob, last week, uh -huh. the Hitman were, as Christian Mamalonga told me, the defensive lineman. He felt this team was caught in the lights of the hype of the first game. The defense is a good way to start a game where you can use that hype to your advantage. Hey, you know, we, we've seen it all over the place. Defense can set the tempo in a game. They've given up that first first down, but if they can uh, keep this this team off this Birmingham Bolt offense off the field, they got a shot at it. All right, good job, good job. And especially, Craig, early in the season, defense is much easier than offense. Timeout number one. Well, Def defense is instinctual. It's de defense, you go after, you make the hits. There you got Rusty, who loves running that defense, getting his That's guys right. together. They went ace, okay? That's all right. There's still ace right now, Tony. Right. What do we got, second and eight? All right. Let's go uh, second and eight. Let's go. Uh, they like to run outside here to counter. Two runs outside. Let's go under zone. Here we go. Rusty Tillman saying they went ace. Not right, sure exactly what he was now, referring Tony, to. The I got to get that personnel. Now tell them to be alert up there. Yeah, tough right situation. Now they got ace. Tell DC, you know, who comes in, who comes out. A lot of these guys, they have personnel. You hear terms like ace. A lot of those are personnel packages, depending on how many linemen, how many 34, linebackers. 34, 35, all right? Let's go. Let's go rip. 34, 35, on one. Casey turned 32 a week ago. Terrific hey. college career. Heisman runner-up at Florida State. Blue 34. And hit. Bostic. Oh, he's crunched in the backfield. Man. Haven Fields ended up making the tackle. The guy they called Baby Boy. Hey, you know what? Thinking about this, remember, the hitmen won the scramble. They got to choose whether they received or kick the ball. Left, they chose left, probably because the inefficiencies they've had on offense to set the tempo with their defense. And so they chose to defend. Third and eight. Aguirre's the man in motion. Looking his way, picked off! Damon Wheeler's got it for the hitman, and yes, the D sets the tempo. Man, it starts up front. Hey, we can talk about the interception all you want, but it absolutely starts up front. Nice, beautiful timing on that step in front of the receiver. I'll tell you what, if you heard the shot that Casey Weldon took as he let that ball go, you know what caused that interception. Casey may be rethinking about the XFL. He got dreamed last week, despite putting up the big numbers. So Charlie Polari, who's got a lot to prove himself, handing off to Elias. Let's go down to Kip Lewis. Hey, Damon, great way to start out for your defense here. What's up? It ain't over. Gang fans, we need y'all today, baby. We need y'all today, huh? I was telling you about that Casey Weldon hit. Take a listen to this. So you want to play quarterback, do you? Dwayne Sab, the right end. A local guy out of Jersey City made the big hit. He was out for three years not playing football until the XFL. There's Elias again. Finding some room and some tough yards on the right. Gain of four. Patrick Scott out of South Carolina State. Made the stop. 
What about Polari? You know, here's Jack a guy who looked great in the yeah. preseason. Get out of the Bronx. Jack Cullen. Oh, with a quick offense. <laughs> Here's Elias again up the gut. Gain of three. Got across the 20 yard line a little bit to see if he no, got no, that no. first. Up to the flat. Nobody went to the flat. Yes, they did. That's what they threw to. Three went to the flat. I, mean, I covered two. I okay, so you got to carry number three to the flat. I went up and pressed it. Okay. On, you got to carry three to the flat. That's why I told you stand up. Yes. Rusty Tillman handles most of the defensive calls. On the sidelines, not as involved with the hold offense. Up, hold this up, hold will be close Third to the first, first down. Right, I'm going right, to check Roger. it. Third or first. Third or first. Third or first. It's close. Couple inches. Mm -hmm. Right there is good. Hey, Keith Elias is a great story. Tough, hard-nosed running back. Classic overachiever. Spent five years in the NFL, but... He became a guy who made too yard. much money in the NFL Don't in his role. 600 grand. Could be on Wall Street. Monday, Monday, set. With screen plays the Red last 80. few years. Red 80. Elias for the first down. That's a nice Load. trip. Man, they were loaded for bear inside for him. And nice went, move at bouncing it outside. He's not the biggest guy in the world, and he's a local four, product. Four, 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 four. Trey left close, 37 slant, on one already. Got a look at Big 88. We'll see him in the game as you look at Elias. The Blue tight end 80. is 6'7 on the hit of Ryan Collins. <laughs> Elias bouncing left this time inside the 15. Calvin Jackson tripped him up with a 12. Hey! Well, if there's any. Any question about how this offense was going to respond this week coming back home? Right off the bat, they're making that good first impression. Good job of biding his time. Not really bursting, but really reading the defenders very well. Opportunity knocking for 2-2 because the starter, Dino Filio, was injured mm -hmm. in last week's game and is not with the team for a few weeks. Here's Elias taking advantage of it across the top. Gain of three. You know, the guy who made that stop, Bob, is James Willis. You know, here's a guy who's been around with 12 tackles last week. Got the big heart. And an insurance business in Huntsville, no, just no, no, in no, case. No. After big, a big, big. long NFL career. But he's the heart and soul. Right, without a doubt. The purple and yellow. You, you listen to him, you watch him play. <laughs> Elias again. Oh, look at the first. Down to the two, first down. You know, it's amazing. You watch this, you watch this game and you realize what it's all about. These guys playing here in the XFL, they are absolutely, you, you can see the commitment. Everybody wants to talk about quarterbacks and running backs, but the thing that you watch and the thing that shows the motivation is that the, 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 the intensity that these guys had down in the pit. The intensity the guy shows after he gets hit the first time. They've been stuck with a goose setting for a week. The only team that has not scored in the league as Mike Archie tries to get to the goal line. Make him pick up a yard. So they are just burning with desire to try and get in the end zone after being the only team shut out in the XFL. Hey, we've had some time to talk to Rusty, too. 38 yeah. toss on one already. Rusty's not the kind of guy that took that lightly. Rusty oh. Tillman, man. Like <laughs> right after the game. Red 28. Red 28. Collins in motion. Here's Archie. He may have been oh. Touchdown. Well, 28-year-old Mike Archie gets the touchdown now. The hitman will go for the extra point. And in the league, it is certainly anything but a guarantee. In fact, it's around 41% so far for just one point. That's right. Remember, we are not kicking the ball. Boring, man. Anybody can kick a football. You got to earn it. Get down there. You get your one point, line it up, and take it to the end zone. It is far from automatic. Monday, Monday. 
Archie's going to try to do it again. Close, but he's knocked down just before he got in. So, well, they'll take six. But they'll have to settle for that. Another stop on the extra point attempt. The Rusty has got to be loving what this team has done. What the hell? They stepped it up. Making the first score here in New York. Graduate. Most of my friends who I graduated with, they're all right in that building behind me in the New York Stock Exchange. But seven years down the road, I'm still playing professional football. Don't let no man take your dream away from you. Don't let no man take your dream from you. Football's about exhilaration. You know, basically, football is life at an accelerated pace. Football with an attitude. Football like you've never seen it before. Hey, yo, get ready for the revolution. It will be televised. A new day has come, baby. It comes to no surprise. The strong will stand, the weak will fall. Today's knees on the floor as we watch you fall. This is the XFL. And now, the XFL hits New York. The New York Hitmen, a team hungry for a win. This is their battleground, their backyard, and their head coach, Rusty Tillman. Coach, welcome to New York. Get out of the way! Got to see here! It's an unforgiving city with very honest fans. If the Thunderbolts have their way like the Outlaws did last week, Rusty's going to be hard up for friends. XFL on the Big Apple. There's nothing quite like a New York fan. In these parts, you have to earn it. The rewards are always greater on Broadway, but so are the expectations. And today here at Giant Stadium, the Hitmen know they need to make a huge first impression at home after a sluggish opener in Vegas. It's the Birmingham Bolts and the Hitmen next on TNN. And now, for the first time ever at the Meadowlands, your New York, New Jersey Hitman. Give a warm New York welcome to the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the XFL, Vince McMahon. everyone here in Giant Stadium for coming out and braving the elements, XFL style. As you know, here in the XFL, we have our version of the coin toss. It's called a scramble. And in a moment, two men representing each team will scramble for the ball. The man who gains complete control of that ball will have his team and the option of his team to determine whether or not they want to kick off or receive at the very beginning of the game as well as in overtime, should there be any. Best of luck to both teams. 
Let's play some football. New York, I'd like to introduce Mr. Chris Brantley, Tony McCall, Birmingham Bolt. Gentlemen, I'm going to say ready on my whistle. You start. Don't fall start. Right? I will say ready. I'll blow the whistle. You'll start from the 30. No bumping. Whoever gets the ball will have the choice of deferring, kicking, receiving, or defending a goal. Now wait for my whistle. Get lined up and get ready. You ready? Stay ready. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Huh? I want to say ready. Then I'm going to whistle. Ready? So Chris Brantley of the Hitman has gained the ball, and New York will have the option to kick off or receive to start it off. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the XFL on TNN. Craig Benavini with Big Bob Golick, and we are excited for this one. Certainly the Hitman know, hey, they stunk in week number one, but they also know, Bob, they were undefeated in preseason, and right. they expect to regain that form in front of the home crowd here today. Yeah, way to, way to beat around the bush, huh? <laughs> you know, first impressions were so important last week when the league started. Great job, but I'll tell you what, we saw some great football last night. The Hitmen, they got to come here and make the good first impressions with these New York, New Jersey fans. We all know what they're like. We all know how tough they can be. I'll tell you what, they got to get on it early or that Birmingham team will take it to them. Oh. Rusty Tillman is the head coach of the New York Hitmen. A longtime NFL assistant, 16 years with Seattle, said he cried last week after the game because he cares so much for his club and he felt bad for them. They laid an egg. He expects a much better effort today. 48-year-old Brooklyn native Jerry Donato is the head coach of Birmingham, well-known in the college circles, most right recently right with LSU. Hey, he may feel more comfortable here than, uh, <laughs> than Rusty does. Got a brother in and some goombas from back home in <laughs> Brooklyn for the game. Leo Aragus will kick off New York, deciding to kick the ball off. Again, if it goes to overtime like last night in the big game in L.A., yep. they would have the option also in overtime of receiving or kicking. And, of course, they will uh, get the ball to start the second half as well. Well, we're definitely talking about some good football weather. This kind of weather only crazy football fans like and some players that are running around and a little brisk, a little chilly. We'll be okay, though. Capacity crowd of New York fans. Set for this one. Leo Aragus. Here we go. Gordine takes it at the 20 for Birmingham. And he's crunched down at the 27-yard line. Michael Blair made the hit after the 10-yard return. 